Hey guys, this is Brandon here, and I want to just get some things off of my heart. I hope that this finds you well. I hope that you leave after this video encouraged. So I just want to share where I am in my life right now and practically just give a little bit of my salvation story and a little bit of my testimony. So those of you that know me, you know, one-on-one -on -one conversation, you know about my upbringing, my family dynamics, having a younger sibling of a couple of months, well, really a year and a couple of months, um, with high-functioning autism, an elder sister who is two years older than I am, a younger brother five years younger than I am, you know, a father who pretty much has been absent emotionally especially, and since the pandemic, has been absent in the house since March 2020 at least. And now today is February 11th, 2021. So this is day four of a two-week fast that I am doing. And then after these first two weeks, I'll be giving the final week of this month of February to God. I'll be stepping away from social media, completely just disconnecting and really staying in the word, staying in prayer, staying in communion with my brothers and sisters in Christ when I have services, but staying in communion with God through the Holy Spirit. I thank God for promising me and promising each of us as believers with the gift of the Holy Spirit as that final seal of promise, that final seal of who he is in that fulfillment. As I've been going through scriptures and reading through Proverbs in my devotional, I realized how God has always been there since the beginning, always will be, and shall forevermore. You know, in Proverbs chapter one, to begin with, it talks about wisdom. Proverbs chapter eight, you know, it talks about wisdom as well. And for those of you that don't know in the scriptures, wisdom and lady wisdom really is Jesus. Jesus, of course, is <laughs> the word that took on flesh and the word that existed in the beginning of the foundations of the earth in Genesis 1, as well as in John chapter 1. So I have just been very, very grateful for Holy Spirit quickening my spirit and reminding me of God's trueness and his faithfulness throughout all of history and for what is to come. So to just share in the most brief way I possibly can of why I choose to serve God, why I declare Galatians 2.20 over my life here and now is God has really, really realized that no man can save. You know, here in America in particular, we are in crisis when it comes to society. You know, you have the clash of Marxist ideology versus Judeo-Christian values. I just was in my, my bathroom and I was looking at some news. There was a YouTube channel that is Orthodox Christian. I believe it's called LifeSite, but it was just completely shut down and wiped off of YouTube because it violated COVID-19 guidelines, so to say. And for the people that aren't aware of that, the people that don't see that this has nothing to do with political ideology or anything like that, that this is spiritual warfare, you know, I really just pray that you have the eyes to see and the ears to hear and that your heart may be softened to realize what is actually happening in the spirit, therefore playing out in the physical. So in the past year, Last March, the end of the month, I had a fire that happened in my bedroom. It was just a small fire, N literally nothing of my possessions aside from the trash can in which the fire, I'm looking up at my room right now, nothing except for the trash can in which the fire had started was burned. Everything was completely contained. And the way that things panned out was nothing but an act of God. I tend to always close my room door whenever I left, well, whenever I leave. So at the time, you know, I left my room and the door was closed, which helped 
block off the flow of oxygen of the fire. So what Holy Spirit really had spoken to me through the months after the fact was he was wanting to renew me, really wanting to renew my mind, my heart, my soul, and purify me for the time in which I'm in and the times in which we are now in as humanity and as a nation. But even aside from as a nation, worldwide as God's people and his bride. And as I've been going through my devotional readings, I was reminded in Ephesians that before the foundations of the earth, God has chosen select people to have, you know, their certain values and levels of faith to preach the word of God and the good news. So I've really just been reminded that there is no one, no man that is able to save, that is able to deliver from the evils that are all across the world here and now, except for God alone. And I've really just been really, really humbled. And I'm just grateful that we do have such a blessed savior who uses us despite our iniquities, where we are in life, you know, our past transgressions. He wipes them, you know, as clean as the snow that is in front of me, behind me, all around me, and inside of his word. Isaiah 55, 11, his word does not return void. You know, the heavens, they sit above the circle of the earth, and as the snow and as the rain falls down, to nourish the soil, to germinate the seeds that are planted. God's word does the same. It has purpose and it will not end its purpose until it is fulfilled. So I thank God for his promises. I thank God for his word and that his word is alive. As I was speaking with my aunt last week in particular, one thing that God laid on my heart was how constant he is. You know, we have the Bible, which is a written book. The words of that book, they never change. So I'm very, very glad and grateful that we can rely on God. Again, he is a constant when the world is forever changing. So it's just so good. So in 2014 is when I was baptized. At that point, I must have been, I think, I think 20 is how old I was. Yeah, I was 20. So... After I moved away from Delaware and I went down to Nashville, Tennessee to study at Belmont University, I was studying audio engineering and entertainment industry studies. I've always just wanted God to use me. I've always had the fear of the Lord, of course, to varying levels and extents as I've, you know, just navigated through my adult life, my adult journey. And I'm just really glad that God, he loves me you know he loved me through all the choices that I've made whether it have been you know acting in sin or just trying to discover where I am in my place in life you know his grace is sufficient and what I've just been reminded of is that there is no condemnation and no shame and no guilt in Christ a friend of mine from my church had sent me this sermon from a pastor, Dan Moeller, and he was talking about Adam and Eve, you know, in the garden. If it were up to them, if it were up to us as human beings in our own flesh, in our own ability to try to clothe ourselves after falling short from what God's will is, his purpose and his plan is for us. If we try to put on these fig leaves and as they wither away, and we tried to redress ourselves, we would constantly be reminded of our shortcomings, our sins. And I'm just very, very grateful that when we allow ourselves to be fully naked before the Father, you know, he was the one, unfortunately, you know, in the garden, he had to kill to dress Adam and Eve in their loincloths. But when they looked down, they were reminded of God's forgiveness and of his faithfulness. So I want to encourage anyone that is watching this video, allow yourself to just be fully exposed and fully naked before the Father because there is no guilt, there is no shame and no condemnation 
in Christ Jesus. You know, go before the Father, allow him to dress you, allow him to clothe you. So the times when you end up hearing the voices and the imaginations of the enemy trying to guilt trip you, you can look down at yourself and see the righteousness in which you are dressed. Again, I thank God for that promise. I thank God for each of you that are listening in right now. And just, you know, really just press into God's word in this time. You know, there is so much that is just happening in the world that is beyond our, our control. I was on Facebook and I was, you know, posting scripture and posting thought, things like that. And also just speaking, speaking truth. And what I was reminded of is that I don't want to go before God. You know, when I speak and when any of us, we speak before God, especially when we try to speak on his behalf, if he doesn't lead us there, we end up making ourselves look like fools. We make ourselves look like liars. We make God look like a fool and a liar. But when he prepares us to speak and appoints those times, it'll be perfect. So really rest in the Lord, you know, lean into him this time. You know, he is so good. He is faithful. You know, he will deliver this nation. He will deliver this world from its evils. And those that do not love truth, those that deny truth, that hate truth, there will be gnashing of teeth and there will be hardship. So take this time, this moment in which we are still to really seek the Lord and to really repent because he loves everyone. You know, for God so loved the world, he gave his only son that none should perish and should have everlasting life. Remember that. I love you all. Stay blessed. Stay encouraged. Be well and be safe. Take care.